Okay, you guys, let's go ahead and get started so we can get through all of the jet talk today. First of all, thank you guys for coming. I'm really excited about this topic today. The other two sessions have gone really well and I'm really excited about today. But before we get started, as always, I wanted to make sure that we recognize and appreciate how nice our auditorium is. How many of you guys are grateful for our new, beautiful, brand new school? Raise your hand. I love it. Yes. We're really lucky to have such a nice school and we're really lucky to have this auditorium. So, before we leave today, we need to make sure that we pick up after ourselves and take everything out of here. Okay? And while we're in here, please don't put your feet up on the back of the seats. Okay? We need to respect what we've got. Um, as we go into this jet talk today, I just wanted to mention one thing before we get started, okay? When we present these jet talks, this is information that I wish I would have known when I was your age. This would have been really helpful. And we present these things to you so that it can help you. I can't stand up here and control everything that you guys do, right? I can't make you take notes. I can't make you um, appreciate this content. But I do hope that you get something out of these jet talks. I hope that a few years down the road, you'll look back at this information and you'll find it valuable. I hope that in a few years down the road, you don't regret not paying attention. That's what I really hope. I hope today that you guys will take ownership and that you will take notes and that you'll apply these things to your life. Okay, but that, that gets to be up to you, right? That, get, that gets to be up to you. I just wanted you guys to understand that and to, to remember that, okay? Um, all right, we're gonna dive right into the topic today. Developing a value system. How to live by what we value the most, okay? Uh, next slide. So if we're not living by what we value, essentially we're wasting our time, okay? And we'll, we're gonna talk about this today. Next slide. Your values are things that you believe are important in the way you live and work. They should determine your priorities and deep down, they are probably the measures you use to tell if your life is turning out the way you want it to. Next slide. Okay, so we're gonna go over four steps today to help develop a value system for yourself. Okay, and the reason why we develop a value system is so that you can get the most out of your life, right? So that you're not wasting time and you're not living a life that's not valuable or that's not of value, okay? So the first step, and you can start taking notes, is you need to make a list of things in your life that you value. And this is just an example of, the, of lots of things that people value. Some of these are my values, some of these are my friends' values. I found some of these online. Okay, so you wanna make a big list. And the list could be up to 100. Um, I know when I initially did this exercise, um, I think my list was like 50, it was pretty long. Okay, so these are just some examples of things that you value. So that would be your first step, okay? Next slide. So because we don't have enough time in our days or in our weeks or whatever to, to live by a hundred values in our life, we wanna really narrow it down to the top five or 10 values. Okay, so your next step is to, to do that, to identify your top five to 10 values, okay? And the way that you can do that is take time to ponder your top values, okay? You can reflect on your life and look back and, and remember the times that you have felt most productive, the times that you felt happiest, the times that you have felt most at peace, okay? And what were you doing? What were you living, or were you living by a value at that time? And that's how you can identify some of your top values. Another way that you can do this is you can talk to people who love you. Talk to people who know you. Talk to people who have the best interest for you. Whether it be parents or guardians or teachers, okay, or a coach. 
Talk to people who love you. Uh, which values will ultimately create the best you? Okay, you can evaluate that. Which values are going to create the best you? Okay. Once you pick your top five to ten values, I would really encourage you to share those values with people who are, are important to you in your life. Talk to them and say, hey, what do you think about this? Do you see this in me? Okay? Do you see that I carry this particular value? Do you see that I value friendships? Do you see that I value work? Do you see that I value um, mindfulness or spirituality? Okay? Share your values with people who you trust. I know that when I've done this value system, I learned about this value system in my early 20s. And since then, I've been learning about it off and on and really try to, to utilize this in my life. And when I do this, my life runs a lot more smooth. I am fulfilled. I am happy. I feel productive. Um, I have a better self-esteem. I have less anxiety and depression. Okay, so this is something that I put to the test. Um, okay, next slide. So the next thing that you, need, that you need to do, number three, is to define your values, okay? This is probably going to take the most time out of all of them. And when you define your values, you get to take ownership for it. It gets to be whatever de definition you want, okay? Go ahead and click. So prepare a well-written statement on each value describing why they are so important to you. And I'm going to share a couple of examples with you. Um, so, for example, one of my top values in my life is spirituality. So this is how I have defined spirituality for me. I recognize and celebrate that we are all inextricably connected to each other by a power greater than all of us. That our connection to that power and to one another is grounded in love and compassion. Practicing spirituality brings a sense of perspective, meaning, and purpose in our lives. Or in particular, in my life. Okay, go ahead and click. So the next example that I have for something that I personally value is I value happiness. I value happiness because it is at the core of who I am. Being happy will help sustain me. Okay, so those are some examples of how you can define your values. And again, it can be personal. It gets to be yours. You get to own that definition. So when you're thinking about it and, and you're talking to, to loved ones, you can come up with that definition. Um, next slide. Okay, so what are Coach Jay's values? So I'm going to share with you some of my top values just to give you some examples. Okay, spirituality relationships, peace, physical health, mental health, happiness, playfulness, authenticity, and empathy. Okay, so those are some of my personal top values and I like to share that with you because I like to share my life with people if it's helpful for you. And if these examples are helpful for you, then great. Um, I'll just touch on a couple of them. Um, mental health for me is something that I try to focus on a lot. I like to make sure that my mind is healthy so that I can function the best way that I can. Also physical health. I try to honor my physical body and realize that my physical body, I'm really lucky to have it. And I try to take care of it best I can. Um, probably some of you are wondering why playfulness is up there, right? That seems like a funny value. But for me, play, playfulness is a big deal because when I get to play, when I get to go snowboarding, when I get to go out on my boat, when I get to ride my longboard, when I get to do everything that I love to do, when I get to play, that's really important for my emotional well-being and it makes me happy. Okay? So it's okay to have a value like playfulness. Right? Um, okay, next slide. So the next step... Once you get your values situated, once you get them defined, um, all ready to go, we get to plug these into our daily calendar. This is how we get to measure 
how our life is going, and making sure that we are living by what we value the most. Okay? Next slide. So I'm going to show you an example of what a typical week looks like for me. Okay? And this can help you understand how to, how to create your schedule according to what you value. And when you do this, you go through your values, and you make sure that you're covering all of your values in your schedule. Right? Like we said at the beginning, otherwise we're just sort of wasting our time. Okay? So this is, this is an example of the first half of my day for a week. I couldn't get the whole thing on here for the full day, but I'll show you the second half of the day in a minute. Okay, so you can see um, I go to church. That's how I honor my spirituality. Um, in the mornings, you'll see F45 workout. That's how I honor my value of my physical and my mental health. Okay, you see on there that I work. I really love my job because I actually get to practice my values in my job. I get to practice empathy. Okay? Um, hiking with friends. Um, that gets to incorporate my value of playfulness, mental health, physical health. Okay? Um, I also value relationships, and that's where that comes in too. I get to spend time with people that I love. Um, you'll see on there clients. I get to visit with clients when I'm not here. And again, I get to incorporate my, my values of empathy and also hard work. Okay? Um, next slide. This is what a typical second half of my day looks like. Okay? I have scheduled in their family time. I have time that I'm, that I'm um, interacting and spending time with my kids and helping them with homework and going trick-or-treating. Um, you'll notice at the end of my at the end of my day, every single day, I wind down and I meditate or I read. Meditating for me is really important for my mental health. It helps me to be mindful and it helps my mind to stay present and healthy. And when I read, one of my one of my values is education. I like to stay educated on what's going on with my job and other things. Okay, so that's just an example of my schedule and how I've tried to incorporate all of my values into that schedule, okay? Hopefully that's helpful for you as you're learning to create yours. Um, okay, next slide. So you can't improve what you don't measure, and that's exactly why we can put our values into a calendar. It gives us a way that we can measure how we're feeling. We get to evaluate our lives. So if you put all your values into your monthly schedule, you can try it out for a month, and at the end of the month, okay, you get to evaluate how you feel. Next slide. Which brings us to this. Pay attention to how you feel. Learn to trust yourself and your intuition. Take time to reference yourself and check in with yourself. So at the end of the month, if you feel like something's lacking in your life, if you don't feel peaceful, or if something doesn't feel quite right, guess what you get to do? You get to go back and look at your calendar, and you get to say, okay, which value did I not pay attention to enough? I feel like my family relationships are suffering. Or I feel like the value of education is suffering a little bit. Or maybe mental health. And you get to go and tweak your schedule and figure that out. That's why you have it in your calendar so you can measure it. Okay? Um, next slide. How many of you guys know who this guy is? Who is he? Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Okay. So Tom Brady, my brother is one of his trainers, and it's been really fun for me to learn a little bit about Tom's life. He's a pretty incredible person. And I've been looking at what he does on a daily basis and how he lives his life, and I want to share a little bit about that with you. Okay? Next slide. Okay, next slide. So, let's look at, this is a typical day for Tom um, when he's not in season, all right? So let's take a look at this schedule and see if we can figure out what his values are. He wakes up, he goes to the gym, he spends time with his family at breakfast, okay? He goes to the beach. He probably values playfulness, okay? That's a really mindful activity to do also. Um, he takes a nap, he has lunch, 
He goes surfing and he works out, so he takes care of his physical body. He has massage and rehab, and then he has dinner with his family, so he values his relationships. And then he does some work with, for his job. He reviews film, talks to his coach, and then he'll do charity work. Okay, so he values helping other people. Um, and then he has time, more time with his family, and then he reads stories to his kids, and he goes to bed at 8.30. Okay, Tom is very successful, not because he just focuses on football. He's successful in his life because he has a, a lot of values, and he focuses on all of them. Okay, Tom has also fine-tuned his diet to, it, it, it's the most fine-tuned diet I think I've ever seen. You guys can YouTube it and look it up, okay? And that's why he's so successful, is because he follow, follows his value system. Um, okay, next slide. I really love this quote. It says, carefully watch your thoughts, for they become your words. Manage and watch your words, for they become your actions. Consider and judge your actions, for they have become your habits. Acknowledge and watch your habits, for they shall become your values. Understand and embrace your values, for they become your destiny. Okay? And I believe that that's true. Our values become our destiny, and that's why we're learning how to put them into our daily calendar. Okay? Um, all right, let's go ahead and show that video. that in return, you're given a chance to earn the greatest edge of all, and one that can never be taken away. To anyone who's struggling early in the morning or late at night in pursuit of your dream, struggles that many will never see, and to any leaders out there who believe in someone who doesn't yet believe in themselves, keep going. Keep going. Because will always finds a way. I want to live a great, impactful, purposeful life, and I want to impact people from the lessons that I've learned and see if people can learn anything and try to relate it in their life some way. I've been fortunate to learn the right things, and I, what I believe to be the right things will work for me, so I, I wrote them down because people ask me all the time, hey, I want to do it. How do I do it? What should I do? And I say, okay, well, let me think about it. And, you know, let me articulate it in a way that you know, people can understand. I wasn't blessed with a lot of things that they wrote about. You know, they want someone tall, they want someone fast, they want someone strong, they want someone that can, you know, have all these physical traits. But I didn't have all those physical traits at the time. So I had to work to develop other traits, you know, leadership, perseverance, determination, work ethic, discipline. And then you get to be a professional athlete and everyone's really talented. Well, what other skills have you developed? You know, you can't just rely anymore on being the most gifted, being the most talented. What other things have you been able to develop? And I was fortunate to be in very competitive environments. I'm not gonna bring the typical, you know, what you're looking for, but if you give me time to develop, I can develop into something that could, you know, be a great leader of a team and be very disciplined and set the tone and, you know, great work ethic. And those are things that I enjoyed then and I still enjoy those things now. I'm not athlete. I depend wholly on my body. My body is my asset. I can't go out there on the field and eat, you know, fast food and expect it to perform. If I don't have this bit right now, I can't play. When I was, I wrote a new book, when I was a young 25 years old, I couldn't throw the ball. I had a terrible diet when I was a kid. It was worse diet. You know, and, and probably all the way to 25. And I was like, okay, well, this isn't working out well. You know, I'm not quite getting the results I wanted, so why don't I change? You know, I try some different things. And over the course of 15 years, it came to this. And it's hard to say for someone, hey, do all these 30 things that make a difference. I think the nice right is this start slow. Start with what works for you. Maybe start cutting out a few things, but if you want. I mean, it's everyone's life. They get to choose what they want. It's up to people to determine what they want to achieve. You know, I do have the purpose of wanting to use all the things that I've learned over a long period of time 
your highest athletic level to teach other people what may work for them in their life so they can do the things they want to do. I just had in my mind like, oh cool, I went to school and I want to play pro football and I'm going to get big and of course I'm going to play. You crazy? You know, why would you not think that I'm going to be able to do that? And everyone else was like, you should really think about another job or you should put together a resume. And I was like, why would I put together a resume? I'm going to go play professional football. I want to be the best I can be. I know when I go out there, it's not to compare myself to this guy or that guy. It's, everyone's good, everyone plays good. I still feel like there's still more to be accomplished. I was practicing the last two days, like, you know, working on my technique, on my fundamentals, on my, all the things with my training. I still feel like I can be better, be a percentage better. If you happen to be very lucky, when you're 10 years old, you'll have people in your life who tell you the world is anything you want it to be, and you'll believe them. And those people will never put limits on your abilities. In return, no matter the circumstances, you always try your best and you never give up, because that's what you do when you're chasing your dream. If you're lucky, you'll have family, teammates, coaches, mentors, and trainers along the way to help you when you lose faith in yourself. And they'll give you the strength to carry on. If you're lucky, you may get picked last, you may ride the bench, and many times the team may move on without you. And you come to recognize that in return, you're given a chance to earn the greatest edge of all, and one that can never be taken away. Will, heart. So to anyone who feels left out or is afraid of trying their best for fear of failure, you're not alone. The magic you're looking for is in the will of trying and not giving up. The love of your dream is in your heart. One day you'll look back on your life and appreciate your struggles and have nothing but gratitude for everything that happened along the way. To anyone who's struggling early in the morning or late at night in pursuit of your dream, struggles that many will never see, and to any leaders out there who believe in someone who doesn't yet believe in themselves, keep going. Keep going. Because will always find a way. Okay, really quick before we leave, a couple things that I really loved about what he said is he doesn't compare himself to other people. How do you learn? Okay, comparisons can paralyze us. Please don't compare yourself to others and please realize that you can keep getting better in your life. Even when you're 42 like Tom Brady or 42 like me. Okay, don't expect perfection. You guys get to own your values and you get to start on them right now. And they're not going to look perfect right now. But if you start on it, you can tweak them and work on it for the rest of your life, okay? Um, thanks for coming, you guys. I hope you have a great day.